The first reading, uh, they did it a, a little better this morning than last night in the sense that last night, instead of saying the word of the Lord came to no Net, uh, Jonah, they said the word of the Lord, and then they said came to Jonah. So I'm like, no, the word of the Lord goes at the end of the reading, <laughs> not at the beginning. What are they doing? <laughs> and uh, But that's the whole message today. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, or in the antiphon, uh, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The word of the Lord is always coming to us. God is always speaking to us, and God wants a people whose ears are open. God wants a people who listen. And in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is the great prophet, just like Jonah's a great prophet today. But Jesus is the great prophet in the Gospel of Luke. And so Luke always uh, emphasizes the ears. And he always says sinners were listening to him. Tax collectors were listening to him. Even prostitutes were listening to him. Scribes and Pharisees, not so much. They were grumbling. They didn't have ears to hear what God was speaking uh, to the people that day. And so God wants us to have ears that hear, ears that are open. And so that, in a nutshell, uh, is the message. Uh, and we can talk about Jonah a little bit because he's a lot like us. And I think when we talk about God speaking to you, because God is speaking to you, even now, God's speaking to you uh, in this Mass, probably more than ever uh, in our lives, we take an hour here just so God can speak to us through other people and, and through the Word of God, through the Eucharist, through the mysteries, through the singing, and through just through everything, um, through watching the little kids go down the aisle. Uh, that's my favorite way of God speaking. But so God is speaking, and so uh, he speaks in our conscience. Do you know that? That's where he speaks, inside of us. And we, call it, we can call that inside of us our conscience. And so God wants us to follow our conscience, to listen to our conscience. And just like Jonah, he got the word of the Lord uh, to go to Nineveh, which was east. What did he do? He got on a ship and went west. Yeah. Are you like Jonah? <laughs> Your conscience says one thing, and you just go and do the complete opposite thing. Uh, especially if it's something like our conscience saying, forgive so-and-so, and you're like going the complete opposite way. No. Not in this life, you know, I'll forgive him when I get to heaven or something. No, because when Jonah got on that ship, a storm came and Jonah was in peril. When we don't listen to the word of the Lord, when we don't follow our conscience, we bring chaos onto our life, peril into our life. And not just us, everyone on the boat was in peril. So we don't live in a vacuum. We don't live as isolated individuals. We live in community, and when we don't listen to the word of God and our conscience, we bring chaos on ourselves and all those people around us, too. We've seen that, haven't we? The way our families work, the way our jobs work, the way our churches work. Uh, it's like someone can just have a bad conscience, and it affects all of us. Their behaviors, their actions affect all of us. And so Jonah... Uh, had a conscience saying, go east, and he's like, oh, I'm going west. And praise God, a whale swallows him. And that's not judgment. That's God swallowing him up. Okay, God swallows up our willfulness and then just burps us up on the beach going the right direction. Okay, sometimes we just say, God swallow me up. Okay, and one of the saints did say that. It was Teresa of Avila. She said, uh, when I swallow Jesus in communion, when I eat him up, he eats me up. How cool is that? Anyone have a little, I have a little one-year-old granddaughter, and uh, boy, I just take her and want to eat her up, <laughs> right? That's how God loves us, okay? So that's God's love, us eating up Jonah, swallow him up, put, heading him in the right direction. Now, uh, I tell you this, you can run away from uh, what you're supposed to do. You can run away from a lot of things, but you can't run away from your conscience. How many know 
that when you get where you're going, the conscience is still in you. You can't run away from you. You're still there. So you can't run away from God either. You can't run away from the word of God either. And so why keep trying? Uh, and you know, we can't do that. So our conscience is always there in us. And we need to listen because God's always speaking. Uh, I don't need a conscience myself. I have a wife. <laughs> she tells me more than God does. I don't even have to worry about what I'm supposed to watch or not watch or what I'm supposed to do. She'll tell me. If I go out and do the blow, snow blow my driveway and come in, she goes, there's a single woman over there. Go snow blow her driveway. And I, there I am doing works of mercy right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, so I'm, a, I'm double blessed. Uh, so anyways, Jonah is the best preacher ever. Best prophet ever, preacher ever. And by the way, can we talk about this prophecy about Nineveh being destroyed? Because there was a mayor in New Orleans, okay? And a hurricane came and destroyed New Orleans, right? And so this mayor thinks he's a prophet. And so after the fact, okay, get that, he's saying it's because of all the sin that's going on in New Orleans. That's not how prophets work. Prophets work before the fact. God told Jonah to go before Nineveh was going to be destroyed and to preach repentance because God loves the Ninevites, okay? And we need to know that. We were doing uh, a, a gospel a couple days ago at Mass, and David and Saul were in there. And Saul's hunting David down uh, to kill him. He's just hunting him down like a dog to kill him. And David uh, gets a chance to kill Saul. Uh, David's in a cave, and Saul goes in there uh, just to go to the bathroom, really. And uh, so he's all alone. You know, you don't want other people to come into there with you. And uh, David happened to be in that cave, and he cut off part of Saul's uh, mantle just so he knew. And then he felt bad. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute. That might be my enemy, but he's God's anointed. That's why Jesus says, love your enemies, because it might be your enemy, but they might be God's anointed. We can't deal with that. Uh, Saul was horrible, but he was God's anointed. So David said, I, God forbid I put my hand to God's anointed, and so he wouldn't touch him. Nineveh was an enemy for Jonah, big time, uh, but they were God's anointed. And so that's why we love our enemies, because you know what? The Ninevites wouldn't even exist if God didn't love them, if God didn't create them, if God didn't will them to be there and love them, he would just disappear them. He could just unwant them to be there and they wouldn't be there. No one's there except God wills they're there. And so can we just accept that? That's why we love our enemies because they're, they have God's blessing and anointing on them too. They're just our enemies. So anyways, uh, here's why he's the best preacher. They all converted. The whole city. The whole city repented. Can you imagine that? If I preach to a Catholic church and I get five people repenting, I feel good. <laughs> Great homily. Five people came up and said, good homily, Father. Uh, I'm going to run out of here before you have a chance today. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend you all said good homily. We're all repenting, Father. But uh, yeah. And you know what? Who else had sackcloth on? The cows. They put sackcloth on the cows. The cows repented too. He got the whole city and all the cows. Wow. I should be so good. Okay. So now we get it. God's speaking to us, and uh, he does it in our conscience, and uh, it's the word of the Lord, and we're called to listen just all the time. But God also speaks to us through other people. Isn't that right? And so God spoke to the Ninevites through Jonah. And so God sends you out. God wants you not just to listen, but to listen and to go. That's why at the end of the Mass, the deacon says, go in the peace of Christ to serve the Lord, uh, to preach the gospel, to share God's word with everybody. That's what the deacon tell, sends us out to do, what Jesus called his disciples today to send them out. I had a woman speak the word of the Lord to me. I, I'm saying this because it's one of the Masses I'm doing today. So I'm going to run to Holy Redeemer and do it at 11 o'clock. Then at 1.30... They have a special needs mass where special needs people 
can have their own mass and, and they can read and they can play musical instruments and, and they can do the different things in the mass uh, even though they have whatever autism or, or whatever other uh, thing that, that affects them that um, they don't get many opportunities at the mass otherwise. So this woman comes to me uh, and she says, uh, she's at, she goes to, uh, what do you call it, Swartz Creek, St. Mary, Queen of Angels. And she comes to me and she says, Father, will you, can we do a special needs mass at Holy Redeemer? This is like, like 10 years ago or more. And, and uh, I'm, I'm listening to her for a little while thinking, well, wouldn't that be nice? Then I look at her and I says, do you even go to our church? And she's like, no. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> Why are you asking me to do this? And she's, I, she blessed me. She said, because you'll say yes. <laughs> God speaks to us through people like that. And God wants us to say yes. Do you see what I'm saying? Because God wants to do the, that kind of blessing for everyone, for all people even those with special needs. So I'll do the 11 and I'll do a 130 special needs uh, before we go to flushing. And um, uh, that's God speaking to us. So Jesus begins preaching and says the first words, repent. That's a word in Greek is metanoia. Metanoia. Now, Jesus is beginning his uh, ministry. It's like his inauguration, if you will. He's just starting and he's getting to work. Um, and... Um, so uh, can I tell you a story? Uh, this politician died and went to heaven, at least the gates of heaven. Well, this is a joke, by the way. <laughs> you knew it was a joke because the politician was in heaven. <laughs> so the politician uh, greets Peter, and Peter said, OK, let me tell you how it works here, at this, because we don't see many of you <laughs> here. And so uh, let me tell you how it goes. Uh, you get to spend a day in heaven. Okay, check it out. Then you'll spend a day in hell. Check it out. You know, and uh, then you decide on the third day where you want to go. And so the guy goes to heaven, and it's, it's beautiful. It's perfect. It's heaven. Uh, a lot of praising God, a lot of good people. He didn't recognize any of them. He didn't know any of them, but uh, a lot of heart playing, you know, that kind of thing. And so the next day he goes to hell. Uh, there's a Satan dressed in a mater d. Uh, outfit and just serving him, you know, welcoming him, just so happy. They're, they're playing golf. All his buddies were there. He knew everyone there. And uh, it, was, it was really, really good. Just anything you wanted. Uh, Satan just made her deed it right up. And um, he comes back. He says, you know, all my friends are there. And it's, it's really nice. You get whatever you want. And so I'll, I'll go there. And so he sent to hell. And it's like really, really hot, and really, really horrible, and very painful. Satan doesn't have a mater d' outfit on. You know, everyone's suffering horribly. And he's like, what's going on here? And uh, Satan said, um, you know, yesterday we were campaigning. T today <laughs> you voted. <laughs> All right. So the world's, the world's trying to get you to listen to the world. You see what I'm saying? Don't do it. We got enough of that. Everybody's doing that. We need people who are listening to something much more profound, who are called to something much better, much deeper. We need people who know and listen to God. And... Uh, so much more to say on this, but metanoia just says change your mind or get beyond your mind. Meta is beyond, noia, mind. So I like to say change your mind, but uh, it's kind of like get out of your mind, okay? Get out of that mindset, that worldly mindset. And now let Christ live in you. Let the anointing be in you. Uh, that's our calling. That's our life. That's our faith. And what a wonderful faith we have.